The sun is absolutely the life force of this planet. Without it, we wouldn't be here. It really is as simple as that. But how does it work? And more importantly, how does the energy produced inside the sun reach us here on Earth 150 million kilometers later? Well, to do that, we need to take a look at the journey of one of the most elementary particles there is. This is the life of the photon. Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the Simon Dan Show, the place where science takes selfies. My name is Simon Dan, thank you very much for joining me. A photon is essentially the basic unit of light, an elementary particle that is constantly in motion and carries the electromagnetic force with zero mass. And there is one place in our solar system where you can find a whole lot of them, the sun. The Sun produces a staggering 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts per second and in doing so consumes over 4 million tonnes of hydrogen in the same amount of time. It is, without a doubt, an energy producing powerhouse with temperatures in its core of up to 15 million degrees Celsius. It is these high temperatures, coupled with the intense pressure deep within its layers, that allow nuclear fusion to continually churn out the momentous amount of energy that the sun does. So before we start our journey, we need to delve into the interior of the sun and find out exactly how a photon comes to exist in the first place. And in order to do that, we need to talk about nuclear fusion. There are several forms of nuclear fusion and they all depend on the material that's present in the core at any one time and the temperatures and pressures within a core. Fortunately for us, the sun is relatively small for a star, so we only have to concern ourselves with one type of nuclear fusion, and it's called the PP1 chain. The whole PP1 chain begins with two hydrogen atoms fusing to create a heavier form of hydrogen called deuterium. In this reaction, a positron and neutrino will be emitted. We all remember what an atom looks like, yes? a nucleus filled with protons and neutrons and an electron shell surrounding it. Well, a positron is a positively charged electron and a neutrino is essentially an electron with no charge and almost zero mass. Neutrinos are the most abundant particles in the universe. In fact, billions have just passed through your head as I said that sentence. This deuterium atom will then fuse with another single hydrogen one forming a helium-3 atom in the process and releasing a gamma ray. Those are the nasty parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that gave Bruce Banner a makeover. Two of these helium-3 atoms will then fuse, kicking out two hydrogen atoms in the process, leaving a nice freshly made helium-4 atom. That process is hydrogen fusing to helium in its simplest form. Right, now that we've addressed that, where does our photon come into all of this? Well, during that second stage when the gamma ray was emitted, that is our photon. It is very difficult to talk about individual photons at this point because the gamma ray photon released by our nuclear fusion reaction is not the photon that's emitted at the sun's surface. So for the sake of argument, we will assume that our photon can be thought of as a packet of energy. The core of the sun is extremely dense, over 10 times more dense than the densest metals we have here on Earth. So photons are gonna struggle to take a direct route out of the sun. In fact, the photons have to deal with a lengthy series of encounters with other particles in the core. After these encounters, the photons have an equal chance of going in any direction. So their progress up to the surface takes the form of what we call a random walk. Bearing in mind that the journey is almost 700,000 kilometers long, each step in the random walk for the photon is only centimeters long. Once the photons have made this tedious journey through the core, they reach a layer called the convection zone. Here, material is lifted in large cells to the sun's surface causing that granulation effect that we see. Once the photon has been lifted through this zone, our photon reaches the surface after an incredible up to 200,000 years may have passed. From here, the photon is footloose and fancy free as it powers towards Earth, making the 150 million kilometer journey in around eight minutes, smashing into your sunscreen face 
at 300 million meters per second. That is, of course, if our photon is one of the lucky ones. It may be spending an eternity traveling off into interstellar space. Wow, what a journey. Strange to think that the photons being created in the core of the sun right now may not hit Earth's surface for another 200,000 years. What will they be witnessed by, if anything? Right, that brings an end to the third episode of The Simon Dan Show. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you all next week, where we'll be talking about the largest living thing on Earth. Can you guess what it is? Without Googling it? Post in the comments below. Have a great week, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.